Hey, beautiful souls, beautiful sunshine here with the Yara Holistic Killer, a.k.a. Sonya B. So I am here with several different prophetic messages. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the message, okay? So uh, the first message that I received was, this is about, I saw it's like a bunch of men kind of gathering together, okay? And they were gathering, they were gathering together. Um, I feel like it's something to do with the patriarch mindset, Um but obviously, these men who were gathering together, like outside, cooking on a grill, whatever, um, they obviously have the same mindset. So, you know, this is this group may not apply to everyone is just what I heard. So this could be a specific message pertaining to certain men, in a sense, okay, which is men who are possibly going through the same exact thing, okay? Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, let's move on from that dream, okay? So the next message that I received was this message came through, um, let's just say this, if somebody means you some harm in any sort of way, just know that, and I just saw a notification, thank you, Lord. So somebody needs to hear this. So if somebody means you some harm and you're not necessarily aware of this energy, just know that whatever somebody may be meaning for your harm, God means it for your good in a sense, okay? So I say all that to say, um... <clears throat> and I know you're probably saying that, well, how can somebody mean in something for my harm, it be for my good? Because God has a way of turning things around, okay? And trust me, believe me when I tell you, he has a way of turning things around. If somebody thinks that they're targeting you, it's almost like they're targeting themselves, okay? So keep that in mind as well, too. Um, this next message I received was, and, and I was just about to say, there has definitely been some tense energies taking place. I can just feel it. The energies just are tense. I can, I can just feel it, okay? And... This could be the collective and it could also be specific people. And I really feel like these are men kind of going through this energy or whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, I really feel like these are men going through these energies. So I say all that to say, this was a message that is pertaining to past life. Okay. So sometimes God may reveal something to you that you may not necessarily understand, but sometimes this could be information from your past life or something that you need to heal in this life. Okay. So it could be coming up and you maybe, I just heard you could be you could be your mind is just like when you're not grounded in a sense it's almost like you can be reactive to the information that's coming to you so rather than being reactive just take a moment take a moment breathe and just ask you know what is it that you are trying to reveal to me you know if, you know if it's the most high okay so i say all that to say the one thing i'm starting to understand is there are some people out here who are trying to distinguish <clears throat> excuse me god's voice and I don't know why I just did that. God's voice. And they're trying to determine and decipher what is the voice of the enemy. Because I've always said growing up that we have two little individuals sitting on our shoulder. We got God on one side and we got the devil on the other side in a sense. Okay. And I say all that to say it's almost like, you know, you can hear this, this, this. And it's like, which way do I go? Which way do I go? Am I making the right move? Am I making a wrong? Am I doing the right thing? So I know that a lot of people are kind of dealing with that at this time. Okay. But the way I just heard it, thank you, Spirit. The way I just heard it is, it just depends on your karma of what karma you are serving, what karma that you owe, because people can owe a spiritual debt in the sense of something that they need to pay off in order to be able to move forward. It's almost kind of like just hers, like it's almost kind of like playing Monopoly or the game of life or whatever. You know, you can't necessarily move forward until you roll the dice and you, it, and the dice tells you how many times to move forward. It's kind of like that in a sense, okay? So anyway, um, yeah, so the energies are very tense at this time. So I say all that to say that this next message came through and is having a lot to do with men. Men, you have been, okay, so my last message that I gave where I said there were going to be a lot of black men who are, um, and it's not just them because there's other men too that it's different groups of race of people that are going through their own karma. Okay. So let's just say maybe the black people, they're going through a specific karma attached to their healing. And then let's just say another race of people, they're going through something else pertaining to their karma of needing to heal stuff from their past life. Okay. So don't ever once think that somebody else is not having issues because they are too. Okay. It's just in a different way. We're different groups of people. We experience different groups of, we each as different race have ex, experienced different traumas, okay? So anyway, so the way I saw this message was, this is pertaining to men. Men, 
the way I saw it was you have in a past life and even some still carrying that energy, energy over into this life. You guys have been very, I just heard negligent, negligent when it comes down to feminine energy. Okay. And I'm not, okay. Because I know that there are, when I say feminine energy, I'm talking about like divine feminine energy, because there's some people who are actually pure at heart. Okay. And then you have those who are just like devil children. Okay. Let's just say it what it is. Okay. And I say all that to say that it's almost like you, it's almost like you make the mistake of treating all these women the same in a sense when there are different groups of women out here. But some of you guys have misused, abused, and mishandled a lot of feminine energy, especially those who are of light. And when I say light, I mean pure white light and pure unconditional love. Just because you can't see what's on the outside, God knows what's on the inside, okay? So you guys make the mistake of mistaking someone for someone else and treating them the same in a sense and god is like that's not gonna fly anymore okay and i say all that to say to the point of injuring is just what i heard injuring and hurting and harming and injured in some sort of way and you were meant to heal that side of yourself from a previous life in this life okay in order to be able to move forward there may be some people hopefully not but there may be some people who's not understanding who probably need some guidance or maybe just choosing not to want to you know heal that side of themselves in a sense and they may make that conscious choice of repeating that same old cycle but just know just know i just heard that it's going to be the detriment of your soul okay if you choose to continue on that path so, like I said, there have been situations, again, from the past that a lot of you men have mishandled people who were children of God, okay? Not saying that we're not, we're not all children of God, but it's just almost like uh, you project your negativity off onto them in a sense. And, and with that being said, sometimes that can cause someone to get hurt, harmed, or injured in some sort of way, okay? So, again, in this life, you were meant to do something totally different. But the way I saw this was there have been situations that you guys are having to come up at this time. We're dealing with past life energies right now. So some information may be coming up to you, maybe showing you things about yourself that maybe you didn't necessarily wasn't aware of. Maybe let's just say if you have anger issues, maybe that's being revealed to you or why you have anger issues. So let's just say um, hypothetically, let's just say in a past life, if you were married to somebody and let's just say maybe that person may have um, lost a parent, okay? And they lost a parent and they were really devastated by losing a parent. And let's just say you as a spouse, let's just say that you weren't very comforting, you weren't very nurturing, and you wasn't understanding of that person or that individual losing a loved one in a previous life. So now in this life, it's almost like you are serving the karma. So if you are someone who have actually lost a loved one, in a sense, whether mom, dad, it doesn't matter. If you lost someone who was close to you, like, like a mom or a dad, in a sense, it's almost like in this life, you may find yourself not being supported or feeling like that you're being nurtured or feeling like that you have somebody's shoulder to cry on or do you have somebody who's understanding towards you because you don't realize it or not, but I just heard that this is part of your karma because again, you wasn't understanding to someone else in a previous life as an example. You wasn't understanding to somebody else in a previous life. So now in this life, it's almost like you had to see exactly how they felt without not having that same support system, not having that nurturing energy around you, not having a shoulder to cry on because you didn't provide that in a previous life. So your karma was for you to serve it alone in a sense. Okay. If that's making sense. So again, if you were somebody who was negligent and not caring if somebody passed away in a previous life to somebody that you was married to, you wasn't understanding, you wasn't caring. In this life, if you have lost a loved one who has passed on, in a sense, um, mom or dad, if you have lost one of those individuals, it's almost like you were meant to serve that karma alone because, again, you wasn't supportive to your spouse in the previous life, okay? Again, it's karma. So I say all that to say, um, I mean, like literally, if somebody's being devastated because they're losing someone and somebody's telling you, okay, okay, enough is enough, in a sense, kind of like that as an example, it's almost like you're dismissing their feelings, you're dismissing their emotions, and you were meant to see what that feels like without having that support in return, okay? I just heard being emotionless, okay? 
Um, anyway, so yeah, there are very intense energies that are taking place at this time. A lot of intense energies. The way I saw it as well, too, is like people are realizing stuff about themselves from a past, whether they were aggressive or, you know, just negligent in any sort of way, whether it was conjuring up, uh, let's just say magic or conjuring up uh, witchery or witchy poo is what I refer to it as. And, you know, trying to project that or send that to somebody else is almost like that stuff is coming up right now because it's meant to come to the surface so that you can heal it, understand it where the root of why you make the ch conscious choices that you make today, why you do the things that you do today, why you could be aggressive, why you could be angry, why are you so emotional or why you get triggered when somebody does this, this, this and that. Okay. Um, and even to the point of, <clears throat> let's just say if you felt like somebody was not accepting of you or you felt like there were mean girls around or you felt like somebody was being mean to you, again, it's a situation that you need to look and stop and ask yourself, is there something that I'm doing wrong? Because believe it or not, some things in this current life that we experience and let's just say people may show up in our life and maybe let's just say that, uh, somebody's like, Ooh, like, you know, I don't want to be around her in a sense. Um, sometimes it's not a situation of just someone's just being mean. Sometimes people are sensing and remember that energy from a previous life. Cause remember energy is stored up in your DNA. Okay. So when we don't heal or address any issues from our past, like if we don't heal any issues this time around, that energy will stay in our DNA and our muscle tissues and stuff stored there. And it's like that energy will pass, be passed on to another life when we get reincarnated again. So again, it's the situation of clearing out that DNA so that way you can heal from it because obviously if this person comes in within your vicinity and you feel like, I don't resonate with this, something about them I don't really care for too much, it's obviously a reason, okay? Because it, again, could be tied back to a past life. So this next message I received was a situation of there was two houses, okay? And this is a very important message as well because there are some people that's going through this at this time as well too. So there was... There was two houses. Let me tell you the first message. The first message was about surrounding yourself around, being around family, okay? And it's not about just being around family. It's about for those who are kind of pushing themselves away from family and choosing to kind of be alone in a sense, it's almost like the most high wants you to know, look, hey, you have all these people who truly care about you in a sense. And it's almost like just because they don't show it in the way that you want them to does not necessarily mean that they don't care. So imagine, for instance, like if somebody like was recovering from a cold or maybe somebody might have been asleep for three days and maybe their loved ones was just a little concerned and a little worried about them. And let's just say family kind of gathered at the house and kind of waited for them to kind of recover and wake up in a sense. And then you wake up and then you realize you have family around. That's letting you know that you are, I just heard, abundant in family, okay? So you should appreciate that but just because somebody is not showing up in a way that you want them to show up does not necessarily mean that they don't care okay they're doing the best that they can what level and stage they're they are at in their life so if somebody um is if you are important to somebody they're going to show up for you but if you're not important to if you're not important to someone or if you feel like someone is not important to you you're not going to show up and you're not going to you're not going to be a part of what it is that they got going on you don't care so if somebody is showing up take that as a sign is that they care and they are understanding and they are doing the best that they can to show you that they do care okay and that you do mean something to them so the next message came as this time this house was empty okay and the way i saw this was it was like five people in a house so imagine that there is confusion and chaos and this is the different situations that some people are experiencing at, at this time imagine that there's like you hear some chaos okay so imagine there's an empty house like for instance if somebody was going to look at to buy a house or whatever and imagine they're inside kind of walking around looking but then they decided that they're ready to leave out the house and it's almost like they go to put their hand on the front door and turn the knob but then next thing you know they hear all this commotion going on outside like like to the point that the house is kind of rumbling a little bit like you know shaking and vibrating in a sense to the point that it scares them and take their hand off the knob and they're thinking to themselves okay i can't go out the front door because there's something taking place out there there's confusion there's chaos or, you know something something destructive is happening outside and i don't want to be a part of that 
So it's almost like they choose to walk away from that door and they go to another door that's within the house that was considered like the side back door. And they decided that they're going to try to go out that door, which is slash patio door or, you know, uh, just back door in general. So it's almost like they decide to try to go out that door. So as they try, decide to try to go out that door, it's almost like um, next thing you know, the commotion comes near that door. So that prevents them from going outside. So I say all that to say some, some of you guys may be, someone could be projecting right now and people have a tendency to project when they're trying to control the situation, manipulate, manipulate the situation or want to be in power over the situation. So don't allow this situation to cause you to be fearful and to be in a situation of, um, and be in a situation of being feeling hopeless because the way I saw it was it's almost like the five people that was in the house, the first person who went to the first door and the second door, they decided to go sit in the closet and close the door. But then the other four people who was also in the house with them decided to go and sit in the closet on the floor and kind of like feel a little hopeless just like the other person did so whether it's a situation of like let's just say your ancestors showing up and just sitting there because you're sitting there or this is a situation of feeling like you in this house there's nothing in here for you to protect yourself and this could be a situation as well too is that god wants you to know hey i have your back because there's absolutely nothing around for you is just what i heard for you to try to protect yourself so just know it just know and believe when you make a step forward that i have your back i am protecting you okay and that's something that you have to keep in mind because as I saw them go into the closet, sit down on the floor, I got the feeling of just hopelessness. It was almost like a feeling of just giving up because the commotion was going on outside and they feel like they couldn't go out the front door. They feel like they couldn't go out the back door. And sometimes, again, people will create illusions to make you think something is happening when it really is not, okay? And sometimes God will allow that to transpire because he wants to know, okay, this is happening, but are you going to trust me? Okay, so sometimes it's God's trying to push us past that fearful state of mind so that way that we can push ourselves forward. Like, are you going to allow this fear to stop you? Are you going to allow this roadblock to stop you? Or are you going to keep moving? Okay, and then this next message I received was. Um. Oh, this other message I received this morning was too, again, it's pertaining to like past, past life energies. So this is a situation of, let's just say that maybe if you're a couple and you decide you wanted to go visit a family member, let's just say like your sister or whatever the case may be. And let's just say that you and your spouse went to go visit your sister. And then maybe you as a, the woman decided that she wanted to stay a little longer to visit, stay a little longer to visit the sister, but then the husband was ready to go. So it's almost like you say, Hey, well, can we just stay a little longer? Like I'm, I'm not ready to go yet or whatever. And the husband becomes angry and upset to the point of just kind of causing a scene outwardly in a sense. But the way I saw this was is too like if this is a situation that is transpiring in reality for you right now in this day, take, in this day, time, and space, in a sense, it's almost like you were meant to speak up and speak your truth. If you're someone who wanted to spend time, energy, and effort into your loved one, there's nothing wrong with that. So don't ever make somebody make you feel like you should not be a part of your family or share or tell you where to share your time, your attention, or your energy and who to share it with if that's what you choose to do. Because the way I saw this was, is this individual was kind of coming off as being controlling in a sense, trying to manipulate the situation. You know, like, let's just say somebody was like, on it, you know, fuck this shit. You know, I'm so sick and tired of you always doing this because it's a way to kind of instill fear in a person to get a person to be like, you know what? Never mind. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You see what I'm saying? So be mindful of that because when you deal with situations like that, that people are trying to control or manipulate the situation, it's a situation of kind of like narcissistic behavior does that in a sense as a way to keep control. Because first thing people usually try to do, especially if there's someone who are abusive in a sense, whether it's verbal abuse or whether it's physical abuse, the first thing they try to do is just isolate them from family in a sense. So just be mindful of that type of energy as well, okay? So anyway, I have, that's the end of those messages, but I have these quick script, script uh, Additional messages, which are scriptures that I received, which is, oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Okay, so...
Okay, so this first message I receive is James 3.13, okay? It says, who is wise and understanding among you? By this good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom, okay? So again, I just said a second ago that sometimes God wants you to push past through your fears, okay? He wants you to face your fears. So whatever it is that's keeping you, you know, fearful of any situation, you know, it's like God wants you to face that situation. But, but also being humbled in the process, you know? Um, this other scripture I have is Roman five, three to four it says not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. Okay. This doesn't mean that God enjoys our suffering, but just sometimes God wants to know that even when times are good, when times are bad, that you still know how to rejoice. Okay. So it says not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. Okay. So God always has a reason of why he do things. We may not necessarily like it, but it's there for a reason. Okay, and then I have this other additional message, and it says Hebrews 10, 35 through 36, it says, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which is a great reward, okay? And I just said that the people were sitting there in a closet hopelessly, okay? So it is a great reward for you, excuse me, for you, uh-oh. For you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised to you. Okay. So it's a matter of not giving up. And when you don't give up, you there's a, there's a reward for you. Okay. And this other additional message I have is Hebrews 10, 30 through 31 says, for we know him who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And again, and remember when I just said that, don't worry, when somebody has their hand against you, as long as you are doing the inner work, okay, as long as you made that conscious choice of choosing a path of God, God says anybody who has vengeance for you, vengeance is going to be his, okay? He's going to take care of them, okay? For we know for him who said vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a excuse me, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So the last thing you want to do is stop not moving. The last thing you want to do is stop and, and continue to just stand still and, and, and be in fear. That's the last thing you want to do. Okay. Because you just don't want to do that. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, so this one is important to know as well too because this goes back to the whole house situation and this goes back to the situation of I said there was a lot of masculine energies who mishandled feminine energies. And make no mistake, I don't want you guys to sit here and think that there aren't uh, females out there who have mishandled some males as well too because this energy can go both ways and... The spirit wants you to know that right now, but right now the message that came through for whoever's on my channel, obviously this is a message that they need to hear, but there are some feminine energies out there as well who have mishandled some males as well too. So I don't want you to think that God is just like, oh, you know, he's just only finger pointing at the, the men in a sense. But anyway, it says, bless, excuse me, Matthew 5, 11 through 12 says, bless are you when others reveal you, reveal you revile you, excuse me, and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. So if somebody's doing that, let them talk, okay? They obviously making you irrelevant, okay? So I say all that to say, it says, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for so they persecute the prophets who were before you, okay? So if you think about Jesus, they persecuted Jesus. You know, if you think about the disciples who was walking with Jesus, they also tried to prosecute them as well too. So and then my phone just run. <laughs> so I say all that to say that you have to realize that on this path, on this spiritual journey, you have to know and understand that when you are in right alignment with God, there are going to be some people who are against what you're talking about and let them be against it because you're not here to serve them. You're here to serve God. Okay. And when you serve God, just know that you are under his divine protection.
Okay, so I have 1 Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So I say all that to say you being born again is just nothing more of you being born again because you chosen to walk this spiritual path of just saying, you know what, God, your my will is your will. Okay, let your will be done through me. Okay, and then this very last scripture is Isaiah 55 and 6, and it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Okay, so this is a time to be calling upon God because there are times when God actually shuts the door, and I just saw a notification. There's times when God actually shuts the door, and there's times when God sit back and he just sits quietly. But this is your, I just heard, this is like an altar card, okay? Kind of like what they have in church or whatever. I'm not promoting the churches or whatever, but I'm just saying, it's almost like this is God saying, hey, this is your altar call time, okay? This is your time to draw near to me because there may be a period in time that I'm going to shut the door and you're not going to hear from me for a while. So until then, you might want to get right with me now. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end that here, but just remember that the Most High is definitely dealing with masculine energies right now. And just know and believe that if you have something that's coming up that you're not necessarily sure of, you guys can go to my website and book a service if you like, a personal consulting service to help assist you and navigate you on your journey. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end that message here. But I wish you all much love, much light until the next message. Bye.